since I set off down the road. I've been a long time gone. Long way away, I've been gone now. A long, long time far away. Traveling, it ain't easy. Traveling, it ain't hard. I love those tasty little chickens from the fancy people's yard. Seven stories high in every story in that place it made me hang my head and cry. I've been a long time gone. Long way away, I've been gone that way long, long time far away. Jane and give my love to anybody who can recall my name. I've been a long time gone. Long way away. I've been gone now a long, long time far away. We're back here at the Commodore for the After Hours series. Today we have Jim Hepler with us. Um, he has a reputation as a guitar player, but I think his songwriting is truly a gift. So we're really happy to have him here. Thank you, Jim, for being here. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is really fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a great time today earlier playing with Bob Blair, and I'm having a great time here tonight playing for you folks. So Yeah, you great. got to play here this morning. Now yeah. you're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to you know, put a bed roll down over here in the corner, and <laughs> just I, I'm here. just going to live here now. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like home for a yeah, lot of people. Yeah. How did you get into music full time? It was just you just said, "Hey, uh, I'm going to be a musician full time." Yeah, or how, yeah. what? I what said, what uh, did that look like? That, that's that's exactly right. <laughs> what what it looked like was was uh, me being at home uh, with my parents, and uh, my my parents were great, but it was pretty clearly time for me to be doing something productive and not just being one of those people living in their parents' house beyond, you know, once the fish starts to smell bad or whatever that saying is. So I, and I, I by that time, I, I really felt like, you know, music was the thing that made me happy to do and I wanted to do that. And I had a friend who had bought a house in Ottawa, and he kind of needed people to live in it to pay rent so that he could afford to own that house. And so uh, another friend of mine and I from Lethbridge um, said, well, let's go to Ottawa and live there. <laughs> and uh, so I put as many guitars as I could fit into my 65 Valiant. <laughs> and uh, we drove out in the middle of winter across the country and, and arrived in Ottawa. And I just started um, 
and really, I went there just because it was a bigger place than Lethbridge. I didn't seem like you could really make a living in Lethbridge as a musician. And I thought, well, a bigger place, maybe you can. And I kind of lucked out. Ottawa was a really, um, it, it was a very active music scene. And there were, there were lots of good players there. And it was a very cooperative music scene. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't sort of cutthroat or anything. People were, people were really good about sharing information about, you know, where there might be gigs and that kind of thing. And uh, so that was, in, in a lot of ways, really a lucky move for me to kind of get my feet into the business of uh, playing music. This is a new song. I'm going to do a new song. So when you write a new song, you don't know. You know, when, while you're writing it, you don't know. You think, this is going to be great. This is a really dumb idea. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. And then you write it, and then, of course, you have to learn it. And then, then you don't know. You still don't know, because you go through these times when you think, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. And then you go through other times when you think, yeah, I'm not going to be playing this in a year. So if I'm not going to be playing it in a year, I better play it now. So, <laughs> so this is a song, um, I think, about uh, romance and orbital mechanics. It's, it's, a, it's a song for the lovelorn astrophysicist, which I'm thinking is a, probably a bigger market than you might initially think. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know any astrophysicists, so... doesn't care about my heart She doesn't feel the evening breeze Caress your radiant face I know the moon doesn't care about my heart She marks her time she makes her rounds, balances speed and weight. I beg you, don't be fooled, dear, in spite of the reams of flights of fine poetic fancy she inspires. doesn't care about my heart she doesn't see your shining eyes in her reflected light I know the moon doesn't care about my heart but the sky is so beautiful tonight Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I, 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 wanted, I wanted to let that ring out before we started clapping just to get every last little second of that beautiful note. Oh, wow. okay. Well, that's... I almost want to turn the rest of the lights off. Do that again. <laughs> <laughs> when, like, when did you kind of debut as a, as a songwriter? Like, when, when did you start writing and when did you kind of take that step to say, I want to start performing my own songs? Yeah, well, I, I mean, writing, I guess it was always something that I did a little bit. 
Um, but I, I, you know, at first I just tended to do it when, when something would clobber me over the head and say, here, you know, here's here's a song or here's most of a song, and you know, mm -hmm. finish it. And so they were, you know, mostly not that good. <laughs> um, and I, well, I remember at one point in Ottawa, uh, and by this time I was back mostly living in Ottawa and sort of working as a freelance musician doing, playing bass for people or sometimes playing guitar for people and doing some solo stuff in restaurants. There were lots of restaurants there at that time at least that you could do that and little bars and stuff. And uh, so there was a whole kind of uh, Ottawa folk music mafia there that was <laughs> that was doing stuff and a bunch of us got together and 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 one guy had this idea that we could all we could all kind of be the house band for one another and you know somewhere or other we'd scrounge up some money and make some recordings and I was going to be the bass player in this house band and I thought that would be really fun and I would be really happy to do that, but there would be no way that there would be any money in it for me <laughs> um, because I wasn't going to be one of the one of the performers. I was just going to be a side guy. And, right. and I knew there wasn't like, you know, extra money sitting around in this mm -hmm. in this idea. And so I thought, well, maybe I should write some songs for some of these other people to do. And I tried that. And uh, I actually wrote some songs, and nobody particularly wanted to do them. Uh, but it was it was a, a sort of a step in. in Did you show in them your direction. songs? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And what was their like? What was uh, their... that was like? Oh, that's a nice song, but it wasn't what they were going to do. Okay. Anyway, the whole thing never never came to fruition. So, yeah. uh, I mean, maybe somebody would have done one of my songs. I don't know, but mm -hmm. but uh, so that was a little kind of kick in the pants for purely commercial reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, later on as I just began to write more songs, so I had, you know, kind of enough that I could, when I was playing someplace, I would be playing a reasonable number of them. And, and uh, uh, well, a friend of mine actually pointed it out to me that, that the songs that I wrote were something unique that I have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he said, well, good guitar players are a dime a dozen, like, you know. Yeah. And 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 I, that's true, you know, and, and at that time I was kind of like, well, you know, do I want to be a hotshot guitar player or not? And actually along about that time I saw a guy at the folk festival who, are, not to name names, but he was one of those guys that their calling card is their hotshot guitar player. Like that, right. was, that was his thing, you know wasn't Tommy Emmanuel, but that kind of thing. Like, you know, you're going to come and you're going to see some hot legs, right? Mm -hmm. And I went to see him at, at a, you know, one of the workshops in, in the morning. And I don't know whether it was too early in the morning for him or something, but he, he, he was good. I mean, he was a really good guitar player and he was doing all kinds of stuff that I can't do. But he wasn't really on, you know. So he was doing this stuff that basically his whole shtick was see how good I am and he just wasn't quite good enough to really pull it off and I thought boy you know to be if that's what you're going to do to be on the top of your game you got to work really hard <laughs> you know you've got to you've got to because you got to nail it every single time you got to nail these really hard things and I knew that I couldn't do that so at the same time, this friend of mine who said, well, you know, your songs, like, nobody else is writing those songs. Yeah. And it's not that they're better songs, it's just that they're come from, I guess, my own peculiar take on the world. <laughs> a song called uh, Someone Else's Problem, and uh, it's one of those songs that I, I, I think I was at work based on the stationery that I found the original scribblings on, 
And I, I had some idea and I scribbled down a couple of lines and forgot about it, but I had brought it home and stuck it in a book somewhere and, and probably 15 years later I was going through papers trying to get rid of stuff and I saw that paper and I went, oh, I think that's a good idea. I think I should finish that song. So this had a, a long incubation period, but but it's a short song. So. With, apparently with a long introduction, let's try that again. Like a pile of dirty laundry, or last night's stale beer, speed trap in a two-bit dead-end town. Broken down Volkswagen by the roadside in my mirror. And she's someone else's problem now. Gravy on a white shirt, a broken whiskey glass, tire rim that's standing out of round. Like every ancient monarch from my high school history class. Someone else's problem now. I'm not pointing fingers, can I tell you who's to blame? I've forgotten every letter ever used to spell her. Soap in my eyes held me under till I nearly drowned. Put me through the ringer, then she hung me out to dry. But she's someone else's problem now. She's someone else's problem now.